Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's talk a little bit about some additional equations we can utilize when we talk about the curvature of a curve. So what are they? Well, we're already familiar with this one. We've defined the curvature as being equal to the change in the angle, which is the angle between the positive x-axis and the direction of the unit tangent vectors along the curve in the direction of the travel along the curve and with respect to how far you travel along the curve. Now, we also know that we have a normal vector associated with any point on the curve and to find the direction of the normal vector we simply take the unit tangent vector and rotate 90 degrees in a counterclockwise direction so the red vector right here represents a unit normal vector at this location and you can see you would have unit normal vectors pointing outward from the curve as you travel from here to there on the curve now we also remember an older equation that the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to the angle phi, again that's the angle that is between the positive x-axis and the direction of the unit tangent vector, that will be equal to the unit normal vector. And we know that we have the old equation here that the curvature is equal to the change in the angle phi with respect to the, the distance traveled along the curve s. Now, if we multiply this equation right here with ds, uh, d phi ds, and we do the same for this side of the equation, d phi ds, notice then we can get on the left side d theta ds, eliminating the angle phi, and on the right side we end up with this being equal to the curvature k, kappa, I should say, times the unit normal vector. So now we have a new equation where we've eliminated the angle phi. We can now determine a relationship between the curvature of the curve and the unit tangent vector and unit normal vector along with traveling along the distance s along the curve. So now we have a new equation relating kappa to the unit tangent vector and unit normal vector without the need of the angle phi. In addition to that, if we want to know the magnitude of the curvature kappa, we can take dt ds and say, well, that is equal to k times n, which is what we established here. But then if we take the absolute value of both sides, then we can see on the right side, we can take the absolute value of k times the absolute value of n. And of course, the absolute value of the unit normal vector is equal to 1, which means that kappa, the absolute value of kappa, the absolute value of the curvature, be it negative or positive, doesn't matter, we take the value of that, is always equal going to be, is always going to be equal to the absolute value of the change in the tangent vector, the unit tangent vector, with respect to the travel along the S, which kind of makes sense when you think about it. You can see here that as the direction of the tangent unit vector changes, the angle will change accordingly. So therefore the absolute value of the curvature will therefore be equal to how much the direction of the tangent vector changes because you know the magnitude of the unit tangent vector doesn't change so how much the direction changes and that will then be the definition of the magnitude of the curvature of course the change can be to the left or to the right and that's why we use the absolute value sign to get rid of the fact that the curvature can be negative or positive positive. and finally if we now take this definition of the change in the direction of the unit tangent vector with respect to the travel along the curve if we multiply that times ds dt because now what we're trying to do is express kappa in terms of the parametric variable rather than in terms of the s variable so with other words we can relate kappa to the travel along s we can have kappa as a function of the change in the angle with respect to s we can have kappa in terms of the change in the direction of the unit tangent vector with respect to s and we can have kappa expressed in terms of the change in the direction of the tangent unit vector with respect to the parametric variable so to do that we're going to multiply this times ds dt of course we have to multiply the right side by ds dt as well so basically we multiply both sides of this equation by ds dt notice the s's cancel out so now we have dt dt the direction of the tangent unit vector changes with respect to the parametric variable and that's equal to the value of kappa, the value of the curvature, times the change of s with respect to the parametric variable times the direction of the tangent normal vector. And so we can express kappa or the absolute value of kappa, the absolute value of the curvature in terms of this as well. 
So it's kind of interesting when you now also look at this case right here. Notice that the direction of the tangent unit vector is changing from pointing straight, almost straight up to pointing more to the right. So you'd expect that the curvature would be, well, it would be negative because the angle is going to change, which means if you multiply the curvature times the tangent normal vector, we get a vector in the opposite direction. So basically, it points to the direction of center of curvature of the curve. And so when we look at that here, is that says, it tells us here that the direction of the unit tangent vector with respect to traveling along the curve is going to be equal to a unit vector pointing to the center of curvature of the curve, which in this case, since kappa is going to be negative in this case, you can see that yes, indeed, this will always point to the center of curvature of the curve, and that's determined by this equation right here. So now it seems to make sense when we have the various expressions for kappa for the curvature that you can see that in all cases the direction of the curvature or the direction of the unit vector pointing in the direction of the curvature will always be to the center of curvature of the curve. Wow, that's a lot of words, but hopefully that made sense to you. And that's how it's done.